we've been told, I think we all understand that our hormones change a, as we age. Is it safe to say that everybody needs some sort of balancing or tweaking as they get older? Yeah, you know, definitely, especially for guys, you know, guys are going to go through the andropause. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the, the female menopause. Sure. And guys are going to go through that starting about age 40 up to age, you know, 50 to 60. Whereas the women go through it at age 50, boom, one year they lose their hormone support, they're hot flashing, they're cranky, they turn to bears. Guys slowly will go through that. So if you look at a 40-year-old male, looks pretty good, he's got his muscle tone. Then you look at your 50-year-old and a 60-year-old male. So the difference is, you know, happen pretty quickly. And a lot of that's the loss of the growth hormone. It's the loss of testosterone. It's also the conversion of testosterone into estrogen in those guys. Um, and it's not just, hey, I can look better, I can feel better. But we're finding, too, guys that have lower testosterone levels also have more prostate problems. They have higher cancer rates. Um, they will have higher cholesterol problems, more heart attacks, more strokes. They don't recover as well after a stroke or a heart attack. So we're finding hormones are very protective. It's not just a... I want to feel good, look good. It's actually mm -hmm. I want to protect my health and decrease my risk of chronic disease too. When you mention women and the, and the the tough, drastic change that they face through menopause, if if they start on a balancing program earlier, can that transition be smoother for them? Yeah, you know, men, women too. They they don't always just go boom at fifty. Mm -hmm. Most women at age you know thirty, thirty five they're going to start getting a, quote, imbalance in those hormones. They're still having their cycles. They can mm -hmm. still get pregnant. Things are still happening. But, you know, we can have a 35-year-old woman who comes in and she's like, gosh, you know, I have these terrible headaches and, you know, I'm not motivated. I'm just, I just don't have what I had before. We actually look at her hormone levels. And what we'll do in a case like that is we'll actually look at a whole month. Every other day we'll check her progesterone, estrogen, and testosterone levels. We can get a graph of exactly what's happening on that month. And for a woman like that, it's just a matter of kind of optimizing that cyclic you know, uh, rhythm of mm -hmm. the progesterones and estrogens. And we do it in a very, what I would say, bioidentical or very physiologic way. Uh, I think a physiologic way is a really good way to put it because we're just following the physio physiology of the body and giving them exactly what the body would produce. It's not a synthetic hormone. And there's a big kind of controversy here between a, a synthetic hormone. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. women should be scared of that because things like Premarin and progestins, those increased risk of blood clots, stroke, uh, ovarian cancer, uterine cancer, breast cancer. A bioidentical hormone does not have the same effect as a synthetic. A bioidentical hormone is exactly what your body's used to every day. It's what is fine-tuning that orchestra. So giving a bioidentical hormone or finding does not have the same risk as a synthetic hormone.